and we are live. Hey guys, Kathy Iconis here with QBO Chat. Really excited to be here with Jenny Moore um, with Practice Ignition. And um, I am going to wait a minute or two for everyone to roll on in and here. It's a little slow thing where, you know, once I start going live, people, people slowly come on in. Um, so we are packing the room going to have some fun today talking about practice ignition and what all it can do for your practice and um, seeing if it's the right fit for you and look at me I'm just like looking at the names looking at the names seeing if they come in <laughs> if you are here and can hear me just like pop something into the chat say hi um, but if you do have a question during the presentation please make sure that you use the Q&A panel uh, I will be helping with that and managing that. Um, and, and Jenny said, hey, everyone, to all panelists. And <laughs> that's what I do all the time. I do all the messages to all panelists. We got to do it to everyone. <laughs> oh, I tell you, right? There we are. Now I'm going to do that again. <laughs> no, no it's, you, seriously. Sorry, I called you out on it, but I do this every time there's something i like don't do right and it's not that you did it wrong it's just like every time i'm like uh, oops didn't mean to do that those thankfully, darn defaults <laughs> yes thankfully i can see that it's recording right now and that's like my big issue like you guys can hear me we're on video you can it's going to be recorded so that we can all watch it later um but yeah this is the craziness <laughs> of what happens when you come over to QBO chat. Okay. Um, <laughs> that's, that's my world anyways. Um, so yes, thank you everyone for saying hi in here. Um, if you have a question, please put that in the Q and A. I'm going to help Jenny with that. Um, because she's going to get really passionate about all this stuff and talking about it and like how she also has a bookkeeping practice. So, and has used this for a while, like how, how it's helped her. Um, so she's going to have those two different perspectives to be able to show us everything about practice ignition, which is pretty super cool. Um, but that means she definitely can't be multitasking 500 things, just a few. So I'm definitely helping out with Q&A on that. Um, so I'm going to hand it over to you, Jenny. Thank awesome. you for being here. Well, thank you for having me. I, I really appreciate the opportunity, Kathy. It's been a long time since we've chatted. I know we did chat yesterday and I had a ton of fun. It was like the yes. highlight of my day yesterday was <laughs> just talking about fintech and, you know, escaping from all the madness as, as accounting yes. professionals have to do right now. <laughs> Oh my goodness gracious. So everyone today, this is, um, I want to say it's going to be like a laid back approach to this webinar, but do feel free to ask those questions within the Q&A. Um, I'll introduce myself a little bit more with my role with practice ignition, but I just want to set that up front that we're just going to really create sort of like a non-salesy demo approach to you today from a real life practice owner on how to use this tool and, you know, feel free to plug my mind for other workflows or other ideas, whatever, whatever this is, it's to help you today. And that's really what our initiative is at Practice Ignition is just to help accounting professionals grow their practice. So let's make sure Google is working here properly. <laughs> Okay, so today we, we call it a deep dive. Some people call it a demo. Whatever the case may be, we are going to talk about practice ignition um, and all the good stuff about what it is and how efficient it can help you run your practice, whether you're a large practice or a smaller boutique bookkeeping practice, which is what I now currently run as well. So available for all sizes, if you will. Um, You'll see me sort of move back and forth. It's because I'm going to be focusing on a demo in the slide. It's not because I'm just casually ignoring you. Uh, so uh, please excuse me as I manage different monitors here. So my name is Jenny Moore and I'm the head of accounting for Practice Ignition in the Americas. Uh, I also have a counterpart in the US. His name is Joshua Lance of Lance CPA. He primarily helps out with the US side and I'm in the Canadian side, but we end up doing a lot of work together. So you'll see us bouncing around on different channels and different, um, different types 
of content that's out there. Uh, similar to Kathy, I love social media. <laughs> so if you're into social media, I know if you're a follower of Kathy, you're probably into Twitter. This is my Twitter handle. I love engaging with folks, you know, sharing good ideas, you know, all that great stuff. I'm also on LinkedIn as well, which by the way, hint, hint, is where I find a lot of high value clients. So I love LinkedIn. This is my LinkedIn channel um, and feel free to reach out. Um, so a little bit more about me is I also run a small boutique bookkeeping practice here in Ontario, Canada for almost the last 15 years. So Kathy and I were kind of swapping stories about that uh, <laughs> yesterday. And, you know, during this journey, what I've done is taking something that was very, you know, paper based, very desktop, -y, you know, very archaic and uh, had to make a change uh, because I was a work from I am a work from home mom with three busy kids obviously all this good stuff and at this time of my life i could only work 22 hours a week so i had to find technology more efficient ways to do bookkeeping I'm sure that resonates with a lot of you that's when i adopted cloud technology because i was like y'all there's got to be a better way of doing this stuff <laughs> so that's where i am right now paperless yes i do love my sticky notes i just can't quite you know break that you know that little fix if you will but everything's virtual there's some clients i've never even met like physically you know handshake because they're like in the yukon and i'm in ontario there's some like you know i've never even seen their face on zoom because maybe they don't want to use their camera but we've done business for years right so right. This is how I've been able to grow my practice, my virtual practice, and just work with some really cool people. So hopefully uh, some of my insights will help you today, whether you choose practice ignition or not, feel free to, to ask questions about running a practice in general and technology and all that good stuff. And I'm sure Kathy and I can be able to give you lots of intel. Uh, like Kathy said, please use the Q&A for that. And uh, how about we just get started? So uh, let's talk a little bit first about, you know, what the heck is practice ignition? <laughs> so if we were to keep it from the brand standpoint, I'm going to give you my personal side as to why I've chosen to use it within my practice. But if we were to keep it from the brand side of practice ignition, essentially what that does is it takes away that engagement piece. So when we think about the contract, you know, your scope of work, what the heck you're going to be doing for the client, right? We want to legalize it. We want to create an engagement. And don't be, you know, worried if you're not creating engagement right now I've done a ton of these webinars different types of topics there's still a vast majority of accounting professionals that are not necessarily compliant with creating letters of engagements or engagements but it's so super important not only for your own insurance but also to protect you and help grow your business by managing scope creep so what practice ignition does is it's sort of that tool ahead of the journey where you're communicating with the client you're creating that legalized document that engagement and it also flows through into so much more we love of using the word workflows, right, Kathy? Like, mm -hmm. oh my goodness, if we hear that word workflow one more time, I want a penny for every time it says it, right? <laughs> Somebody yeah. says it. I'm going to be like a millionaire by Tuesday. Um, but it really is that sort of that kickoff to your workflow is what Practice Ignition does. And it helps you get paid. So like, you know, creating the engagement, keeping it within scope, having that relationship with the client, being interactive, fun, and hip, which I'm going to show you today, and also making sure you get paid. So you know, that's really important. There's a whole digital exercise we're going to go through today. And essentially what it does is it helps you close more deals in less time and frankly takes the friction out of the relationship, that awkward back and forth of Word documents or PDF documents and credit card information. It really helps form the relationship up front. So that being said, um, today's agenda is going to be first, I think what's important is maybe understanding why I love practice ignition. So yes, I've joined practice ignition as the head of accounting, but I've been a long time practice ignition user long before that happened. <laughs> so maybe giving you a little bit of insights from a practice owner's point of view, you know, why I like it, uh, what features are, are, you know, enticing to me. I'm going to walk you through that digital experience, that digital engagement, if you will, and uh, the demo. And of course, we're going to have some Q&A. So let's get started about why I love Practice Ignition. So for me, Practice Ignition is something that keeps me uh, within scope with a client. So for many of you that are out there, maybe you can put in the chat, like a majority of you tax or your majority bookkeeping, accounting, you know, what are you? Uh, feel free to put in the chat to give me a bit of an idea here. But for us, uh, more details, we're 
optimized in the bookkeeping workflow. So our job is to scrub and get really good clean data for the CPA to do the year end compliance. And with that clean data, we're installing the tech, right? So we're, we're plugging in QuickBooks Online or we're plugging in HubDoc and up here in Canada with WagePoint, you guys have Gusto, like we're, we're plugging in, we're managing these apps, we're training them as well. But what I love about practice ignition is it does more than just saying, yep, this is my bookkeeping and I'm going to charge you 500 bucks a month. No, 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 no. What practice ignition does is it helps me define what all those tasks are that make up that bookkeeping level. Because folks, like we, we have to-do lists. I know all of you have to-do lists. <laughs> <laughs> if you're an accounting professional, you cannot tell me you do not have a to-do list. It may be mental. It may be an right. Excel. <laughs> I feel like I'm the to-do to do list fail person. Like, I'm always starting a new one. Like just scrap the old one and just start it's just a new like, one. Yeah, it's like, yeah, right? But like we all have like compliance have tasks, workflows, stuff that we need to do for the clients, right? It could be, you know, that sales, sales tax return. It could be reporting to the board. It's creating the management report. It's running payroll. I talk with my hands. Just go with it. Okay, guys. <laughs> <laughs> but there's all these little tasks, right? And folks, this is where scope creep starts going like this, right? Because as you get a client, like we like to attract um, startups. So startups that are, have a solid business plan that are scaled to growth, right? But if I quote them, let's say that bookkeeping fee of $500 a month, what happens when they hit the $2 million uh, mark and they have, you know, five, and five, probably 15 employees at that point. And maybe they have to report to five different, you know, investors. Is it still worth $500 a month, right? So what Practice Ignition does is it helps you compartmentalize your services, quote on them, but also manage scope creep. So somebody in your team member says, hey, Jenny, uh, this client has another bank account. You can go back and look at the engagement to say, ooh, they're out of scope. We've only quoted them on reconciling up to three bank accounts in QuickBooks Online. Time for a change order. And some of that seems like an awkward conversation to have with clients, but my clients are so trained now that they look forward to a change order. And I know that sounds weird, right? Like what? <laughs> because to them, what we've associated with is they're growing, they're growing their services. They've met a milestone, right? It's kind of like that virtual high five. So yeah. what this does is like, I even have some clients that are like, Jenny, are we ready for another change order? It's like, no, you haven't met your goal yet. Uh -uh. <laughs> <laughs> right. So this is sort of why I love practice ignitions. It just helps us keep in scope so that as my clients grow, so does my monthly reoccurring revenue. Okay. Overall, Kathy asked me this question yesterday. Like, so what do you, what feature do you like best about practice ignition? Well, I'm going to be a little square. I'm just going to say all of it, but mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you why all of it. I love it because practice ignition helps me be on brand. So if many of you are, you know, you're on social media, you're working really hard to create that digital online experience to attract more digital online clients. To me, brand is really important in every tool that I use, like every tool that I use. And I, you know, mentioned to Kathy yesterday, one of the reasons why I adopted practice ignition is because I did screw up an engagement. I did. I lost a high value client because my engagement wasn't polished enough for what that client was seeing online, like through our branding, through our social media, through our discovery calls, through our interactions. When I did the Word document to Adobe to be signed off, it was very bland and vanilla and, and caused a lot of friction that it, it sort of created that stop, like, well, this is really strange and off brand. So by following up with that client afterwards, and I got to tell you, I did not enjoy that conversation at all. <laughs> nobody likes a dose of like, whoop, you know, whoop arse, if you want to yes, call it. Exactly. Like, nobody likes that. Yeah. But sometimes but you, need you, it. you need it. Like, like sometimes you just need to grow up and you need to like listen to the feedback that's you know, given to you in a constructive way. Like we're not talking about being, you know, verbally aggressive here. We're talking right. about getting constructive feedback and just fix it. Right. So the, that was one of the reasons why I adopted practice ignition so that when I send out my proposals, it's easy. There's not a lot of friction with the client and it's branded. It's on, it's, it matches me. It matches what I'm doing. Okay. So I hope that helps you a little bit. I don't want to take like a salesy approach. I want to give you like, this is why I use it. This is how I use it. And hey, if it works for you guys, I think that would be amazing as well. 
Okay. But like, so we, go when ahead. you're talking about that, yeah, the brand and it being, it's just, you want it to be easy when you start that relationship. And yeah. we all are using so much technology, especially internally to make things efficient and all that sort of stuff. And when it just like feels clunky talking to a new client, like I know that one, I, I don't really take on any new clients now, but every once in a while I am in Adobe for, to, you know, get some signature or something. And I swear to God, I still can't figure out how it works. <laughs> and it feels like, I don't know what's happening every time. I'm like, oh, I don't really need to spend time working on it because I don't do this this often anymore. But like, it's not easy to get. And it's only, you know, that signature is just one little part of the whole process versus, yeah, the, the whole, what you, everything you're going to show us. So. Yeah, exactly. No, you're right, Kathy, right? Like you're, you don't want to create that friction at the beginning of the engagement. Like, like you want to create that easy digital experience for the client to feel comforted in what you've basically sold them on through your right. discovery calls. Now I call them discovery calls, but you guys call them whatever you want. And if you want to use my terminology, go ahead. It's not copyrighted, right? So <laughs> like, like, like you want to create less friction because that is why they're coming to you. They want you to solve their freaking bookkeeping pain. They do, right. or their tax pain or their account, whatever it right. is. They're looking to you similar to a physician to prescribe a solution and make it easy to do it. Now you're going to be doing the grunt of the work, but Hey, we got awesome tech to do that. And you know, what, what I use is, is practice ignition to kind of help onboard it. So Awesome. I'll talk a little bit about workflow here, guys, but, you know, workflow can be, I've done a whole webinar deck on just workflow and I'm sure like we could like, we know we can all talk for hours on this, right? But to keep it simple, what I love about practice ignition is how it talks, right? How it talks to other platforms, which is really important. We want to think about how data flows, right? We want to talk about how data moves because what we don't want to do is like take a piece of paper and like, right, type it in. Those <laughs> days are starting to come to an end for us to be in our competitive landscape in our industry, but also to better service our clients as well. They don't care about how long it takes for us to do data entry. They care about their management report, their profitability analysis, their cash flow, right? They don't care yep. about how long it takes for us to use our piano skills to type so many words per minute. So these workflows are really important and how the data flows is even more important to me because I'm not, a, you know, I'm not like the only one on this pedestal. We're all so busy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. And the less time I have to do doing monkey business, the better, right? right? The better for my personal life, for my three kids, the better for my practice or the better for the fact that I'm also an adult figure skater and I just want to go to the ice, right? Like, you know, whatever it is, whatever it is, like there's just other things to do. So I do use a lot of tech. Practice Ignition is one of them, but how it throws the data flow into financial management systems, like obviously QuickBooks Online and Zero. So being able to easily take that proposal and kick off the invoice to either one of those financial management systems, Practice Ignition also does the payments and then it reconciles it right back. Um, but I mean, that is like, woo, not, not, not a lot of people think that that's a good, you know, like that may not be like a, a pain point for you right now because there's other features. But for us, what we really like is being able to implement other types of workflow management. So practice ignition is like your kickoff to your engagement and then you have your workflows. For us at More Details, we use Carbon. In this example, there's Carbon, but there's also other integrations within Practice Ignition. There's Intuit Practice Management, I believe is the word for it. And there's also Zero Practice Manager. So these are really great platforms that you can use that once that kickoff happens in Practice Ignition for your service library, we'll go through it, don't worry. It actually kicks off that workflow in, let's say, Carbon. So I'm not having to manually update a spreadsheet. It's just going, this person signed the engagement, we're kicking it off. And we're not worried about when we're going to get paid because we're going to set up the payments feature automatically. We're just worried about getting the work done, right? 
That's, that's the magic piece. So that's what I like about using the technology and having the data flow back and forth is it just has me focusing on making sure the work gets done and building the relationship with the client. Then it is about doing all this monkey business as a practice owner about invoicing, collecting credit card information or direct debit information and PDFing Word documents and realizing I screwed it up with a spelling mistake or something. It, it just creates more harmonious. I know I, I get very, I told you, Kathy, I was going to get candid. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So anywho, this, this is, uh, you know, these are some options. So, you know, obviously we create a really great environment to be able to accept proposals on the go. So I don't know about some of your clients, folks, but mine are super busy. They're pulling in, you know, ridiculous hours. Um, so creating it in a digital way for them to easily accept their proposal, whether it's on their mobile device, maybe they're at the computer, whatever the case may be, um, on their tablet, they can easily sign off on it and away you go, folks, okay? So um, let's go through uh, the, the demonstration here and hopefully with the internets and everything lovely <laughs> and hopefully I'm still logged in. <laughs> it's awesome. Yesterday morning we had um, the, like our regular testing for our kids. It's now testing oh, season yeah. for school. Yeah, yeah. Yesterday morning the internet was out when we woke up. It was like, oh okay and it did get back on like a minute before school started but i was emailing both teachers it was like just in case our internet's out i hope it comes back <laughs> this is it right like oh my goodness i know with our three kids we're juggling the whole like school home ah i, yeah. I don't know if we can make it through 2020 we can do anything folks. anything <laughs> I, I, can, I will take up basket weaving because I know I can do it <laughs> yes. or rug hooking or something. I don't know. Just because yeah. I've made it through this. <laughs> yes, exactly. Okay. So we'll come back to some of the features, but I know as accounting pros, let's just get into this, right? Like, like just show me the product, show me how to make an engagement. So I'm not going to dance around all the features. I can come back to that, but I'm going to create an engagement for you. And I'm going to talk through some of the different ways of doing that. So basically from the client menu, you create a new client or maybe you have an existing client. So for this one, we have, you know, wilderness tours. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a new proposal. Now, full disclosure, this is my demo account. So be patient with me. <laughs> okay, so uh, part of me here, going right back here. Okay, so we're going to create a new proposal. Awesome. Okay. So with your firm, you may have different levels of services that you offer to your clients. Now, for instance, you may be doing the bookkeeping scope and you may be doing the tax scope. What I like to say to people again, you know, this is your practice. You run how you want to run it. I like the idea of creating two different engagements for those different scopes because they involve very different tasks and sometimes they involve you know as you grow or if you are a larger firm they involve different people to be involved as well right so when you think about kicking off those workflows down the road maybe in carbon you can assign different accountants or bookkeepers to tasks so i always think you know down the road mm -hmm. so you know maybe you're doing you can do a proposal name here so i'm just going to call this the the you can get fancy folks i'm going to be laid back I can just, you know, get something out the door here. So I'm going to say bookkeeping for Wilderness Tours, Inc. Um, if the client isn't already established within your QuickBooks Online or Zero File, you can create it here within Practice Ignition. Bada bing, bada boom, the API takes it over. So there's none of that. Do I have to create it here in order to import it here? Mm -mm -mm -mm. Let's work smarter, not harder. Um, obviously, contact information, email is going to be very important, although I'll show you a link that we can use for those that are super tech savvy and like they're texting on their phone. <laughs> um, easy peasy. Scope, you want to always think of your scope. What is the range of your services? So as accounting professionals, we do have liability based on our involvement within the scope. So you want to be really definitive about that. Is it the beginning of the fiscal year? Is it starting September 1st? Whatever the case may be. So this year, I'm just going to say that it is for uh, this month starting October 1st, and it's going to be a 12-month period. Again, whatever, tweet your own, right? Um, maybe you want this reoccurring monthly, weekly. Let's not get caught up in that. I'm just going to show you that there's some, you know, parameters here. Now I'm going to show you the service <laughs> library later because I just you want to get through this. I want to show you guys the good stuff. Right? 
So I just wanted to butt in. I'm yeah. such a dork. I, no. um, I used practice edition a really, really long time ago. <laughs> and um, yeah, I just geeked out over the this year, next year, this month, next month, little buttons. I was like, I don't know how many times writing a contract. I'm like, okay, when? Like, it's, it shouldn't be that hard in my head to say yeah. when the last day of the, you know, of the contract is. Yeah. Yeah. For some reason, I'm really excited about that. No, no worries. Like, and these are the little tidbits, right? Like what I love about practice ignition is they really do take that feedback and they, they build it out with purpose. Right. right. And these were, um, I'm not quite sure how long ago these went live, but they're, think of it like quick, quick buttons, right? Quick. There. Oh, done. like I used it in the stone ages. So we, yeah. we don't need <laughs> like, yeah, well they had updated like some more little parameters, right? That was kind of thing. Um, yeah. So your service libraries basically think about you know, your services are like the tasks, all the different tasks that you do to complete the engagement. Okay, so that's what I really want you to focus on. So in this case, it's bookkeeping. Uh, so, I mean, my library is a little bit more involved in this, but I'm just going to say bookkeeping maybe up to 200 transactions. Now, if I were you, I'd actually segregate a bit more, like really, you know, you don't just do bookkeeping. I would iron it out like you have payroll, um, how many bank reconciliations you have to complete. If you're completing the uh, vendor processing and vendor payments for the customer, if you're um, maybe managing their e-commerce store and bringing in the data, especially if it's another integration because we all love these like sales and point of sale systems that don't integrate into right. our core financial management system. Isn't that great? Yeah. <laughs> and how often we're doing these tasks and, and all of that. Yeah. Exactly. Who, what, where, when, right? Um, so you can get really diverse with your service library. That would be my, my thing to recommend. So, you know, we have some great templates within Practice Ignition to just get you going. Mm -hmm. um, I've been developing a couple of them with the team as well. And we're building out even more because we want it to be like a ready, set, go kind of thing. So in this case, we're just going to save it. Um, I guess they're getting a deal because it's only $420 a month. We're going to make sure it's reoccurring. Now, you know, let's say you get the books and you're like, mm, y'all are behind. Like you're, you're like into January or something. You can make it retroactive. So they have to pay you up front for all those particular months as well. Hmm. Again, Templates are meant to be templates. You can change things here. You can add another line. You can delete a line, whatever the case may be, and then save the service. I'm going to add another service here. Let's see what else do we have in here. Um, maybe I'm going to offer them some virtual CFO work as well. And wow, yeah, that's, that's a good price. So four thousand mm -hmm. dollars reoccurring. <laughs> that's a, that's a that's maybe we'll you know. I'm just going to make it this one because, you know, if they're only paying 400 or, you know, a little bit in bookkeeping, okay, save the service. So let's just move through this. Again, this, your service library, think of it like all your tasks, because if you're going to integrate a workflow platform, whether it's Carbon Zero Practice Manager, Intuit Practice Manager, you want all those tasks to be linked to your service items in Practice Ignition. And this is also, and I'm going to say it again, this is what protects you from scope creep, right? So like, up to 200 transactions means not necessarily when they hit 201 transactions, but maybe when they hit 300 transactions, it's time to right. bump them up to the new level. And that is what I'm trying to preach. That is how you increase the growth of your firm and you don't do more for less for the rest of your life, that you grow your services as your client grows as well. And hopefully you're attracting those growth-minded clients. Uh, they're great to work with. I know, I, I, just love, I just love working with them. Sometimes they blow my mind, right? It's like, mm -hmm. how could you do a million dollars in six months? Like, what? <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, so terms is, think of terms as your, your written engagement, your legalities, your letter of engagement, whatever your case you want to say. Uh, we have some great sample letters that we've actually updated into our platform. Um, available for different regions throughout the world, but specifically Canada and the US. We have different engagement letters, really great stuff. We use things called placeholders. So you're not spelling the client's name wrong unless you've put it in wrong into practice ignition and you're not spelling their, their, the name of their firm wrong. You're like my days of word. It was like always going through like, Ooh, what do I need to change? Where, what, and doing alt F and <laughs> it's like, well, how about the, how many times you do space bar to try to line up the, the lines? Oh. <laughs> Perfectly. Right? Like, like ah. I tabbed it, but it's, but it's a little, maybe if I do a space, it but it went. <laughs> <laughs> yes. 
right? We know. And, then, and then what we say is not very ladylike, right? Because it doesn't work, <laughs> right? Like it, this is the, that's the monkey business, right? Yeah. Like that's the monkey business. And again, again, hopefully it's not a sales pitch to you guys, but like reason why I adopt a practice ignition. Yes, I screwed up a client engagement, but only working 22 hours a week at that time, the tech had to work, the tools, the tools just had to work, right? That's mm -hmm. just the way it was. So I'm just going to put in my sample letter. We actually have more than one sample letter. And here's, here's a fun, quick tip, guys. Um, some of your clients, when they first have that discovery call, hopefully you're doing it through something like Zoom right now. You probably find the same thing that you're probably part therapist, part bookkeeper, part, I don't know, sounding board. There's life is messy right? Mm -hmm. And whatever happens, I find on the business side that's gone wrong is usually because of something that happened on the personal side and vice versa, right? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, for us in our firm, we're about that relationship. We want to know the big, the bad, the ugly. And sometimes it can be difficult for people to have that kind of conversation with me if they don't feel confident, right? Or that what they're going to say is going to be held in confidence. So many of you are probably familiar with uh, confidentiality agreements. We actually have a confidentiality agreement we put into practice ignition when we're on the Zoom call or ahead of time, depending on how the nature of the conversation has happened. I'll send that confidentiality agreement to the client obviously at zero dollar value. I'm not going to charge for confidentiality. <laughs> it could be like a really interesting, <laughs> really interesting service option. But what that does is they're able to see my digital signature, their dig I get their digital signature, they feel confident, we can just get on with it, right? You know, carry mm -hmm. on the conversation. But what it really also does as well is it helps them start to get familiar with my onboarding process so that when I send them the engagement through practice ignition, they've already used it. <laughs> so a little pro tip, uh, something that can help you as well. Now, this is where we can get fun about the presentation. So I don't know about you guys. I like being a little quirky. Um, so you don't have to take this quirky point of view. Um, you can use different approaches. So presentation is really important. Remember I said one of the main things I love about practice ignition is everything, um, but how it keeps me on brand. So how it keeps my brand moving forward with the client that they're, basically I'm not gonna lose another client like that one that I really, 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 really wanted. <laughs> okay, so in this case, this is, um, my firm is called Scale Business Solutions in this demo, okay? And I'm going to upload a brochure, but I'm gonna help you guys a little bit more because at Practice Ignition, what we like to do is help people get the resources and the things they need to, to run their practice. So I'm just gonna take you to the Practice Ignition landing page. Can somebody just put in the chat to make sure that that transition happened okay? Oh, that's pretty sure over it did. thing? Sweet. That you're okay. in Google, you're fine. Yeah, awesome. Okay, so in Practice Ignition, the homepage, just go to the homepage under resources, you're going to see brochure templates. So these are some additional features and things that you can put in your proposal. So we're not just sending off a laundry list of tasks and a bill. We're going to create a more digital on brand experience for the customer. So at Practice Ignition, this is our landing page here. Everyone probably is familiar with Canva. If not, you got to check it out. Super mm -hmm. easy, relatively free. There's a few fees um, for different types of art. But basically, like this brochure, we can just take it and download it. And you can customize it, you can do whatever you want, make it on brand for you, change it and download it. And it's going to be your brochure for your proposals. You don't have to do this, but I find it helpful. The, the clients like getting a brochure from me. Right. So I've already like gone ahead and done that. So I'm just gonna upload my template here. And, uh, oh, sorry folks, literally one of these days, right? <laughs> I exported it too big. I'm so sorry. Okay. Um, two seconds here. Okay. <laughs> where were we? Download and uh, PDF standard. Okay. Let's see if you'll, yes, I'll hang on tight. <laughs> oh, <you're... laughs> it's Canva. Um, so what's really nice about this presentation side is you can put in the brochure and you can also add videos. 
So some of you may not be comfortable with videos and that's okay. Um, maybe you have a branded video for your organization. Okay. Use that. I mean, for me, the clients are expecting to communicate with me to have that conversation carry on. So I tend to create custom videos within a platform called Loom, which you find here. And I'll usually say something like, Hey, Mr. Smithers, it was so awesome meeting you. Thank you for letting us know all of your needs. This is our engagement. We create just like a little welcoming video, right? And we'll also create a closing video as well so that when, when they, they sign the practice ignition proposal, something pops up to say, hey, we're so excited to have you as a client. Uh, our next steps are to schedule our biweekly meetings, which I'll send a link to you within 24 hours. Mm -hmm. I don't know, whatever you do. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of good stuff. So here's hoping that my proposal is not going to be too large. And if it is, we're just going to move on. Okay, oh, it, it liked too it big that of a time. file before. Yeah, the last time I, I, I didn't put it in PDF standard. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> From Canva. Yeah, yeah. Technology. <laughs> technology. Wonderful thing. Ah. Right. Okay. So here's my introductory video. Again, you don't have to use these features, but remember what I said, this is what creates that engagement. Like when you just kind of slide over an email with an attachment that says, please review and sign it's, it's cold. <laughs> it's cold. <laughs> yes. Right. It is. It's like, Burr. like I'm in Canada guys, that is cold. So like you want to like by creating the videos and you know, you don't have to be candid like me. You can, you can do some well-polished videos, some intro videos, some standard brochures, whatever you want, but it keeps that going, especially if you haven't been able to have a big chat with the clients. And what I like about using a video is I have some clients that are like, Oh, this, this engagement's boring. Can you just give me the cliff notes version? Mm -hmm. And I'll do the cliff notes version and video, right? Obviously they have to be legally binding to the entire engagement, but I'll highlight, you know, their payroll requirements, this, this, this is our understanding, maybe some special stuff. And, and it gives them just that quick reminder. Like, I don't know about you guys, but whenever there's something wrong, like let's say the door to my van isn't working, I YouTube it. And I just want a short five minute video on how to get the dang door closed. <laughs> okay. Yes. <laughs> right. I'm on the side of the highway. The kids are screaming, right? Whatever. Um, um, you know, whatever the case is, but these videos are really important. So in bringing them into our engagements, it's really kind of fun. So in this case, an intro video, I got my YouTube channel here. Um, I'm just going to select this one. This is sort of like a standard one that I had done again. It's not, um, it's, uh, it's kind of neat. So all you have to do is put in the link, paste. Again, if you just did one in Zoom or Zoom, listen to me, in Loom. Zoom. God, they all rhyme. Why do they rhyme? I don't know. <laughs> do you know how confused I am with Vimeo and Zoom? And that those don't rhyme, but it's all like, <laughs> which one am I putting it on? Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Right, exactly. Um, so yeah, you can upload a video. So if you have like a standard video for your organization, great. Or maybe you're doing an intro video. This is where you could personalize something like, hello, Mr. Smithers. Notice I also have, uh, is it Grammarly? A Grammarly? Yeah, <laughs> because, Grammarly on yeah, there. I love that app. So it yes. works while I'm, yeah. So thank you for, pardon me for meeting with us today. We are pleased to give you our proposal of services discussed. Oh, can't spell disgust. Good thing, right? <laughs> there we are. <laughs> I'm a human. I make mistakes. Oh, Cheers, no. Jenny. <laughs> okay. Um, and then, you know, your next steps, maybe you have like, after they sign it, remember I said a video, so I, I'm on Loom. And I'm just going to go here. I love Loom. Loom is so great for explaining so many things. And so I'm just going to pause that, copy the link. Again, it usually doesn't take this long. I'm just trying to show you all the candy that I love. And we're going to add that. Okay. So I'm, I'm feeling pretty confident about this. The next thing is getting paid. Mm -hmm. So for us in our firm, we uh, have payments enabled within practice ignition because we want to focus on the relationship and frankly, just getting the work done. Then doing that whole passive aggressive, you know, are they going to pay us? Are they not? Shall we do the work? Should we not do the work? Like, can we just take that kind of like those feelings? <laughs> yeah. I hate the, I hate the money conversation. I don't. Yeah. I'd like yeah, to yeah. take care of the client, not do all that stuff. Yeah. 
And if they want me and if they see value in what I do, then there should be no problem in paying me up front. Right. That's the way I see it. And if they're not going to do this, then you know what should go up is a great big red flag that's waved. <laughs> yes. Had <laughs> that. Go, Maybe this isn't your ideal client. Maybe walk you're away. Going to run into some problems. Okay. Worst Anywho. client I ever had. Oh, there back. we are. Zoom. <laughs> Zoom. I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, and now it says my internet connection is unstable or it was yours. I don't know. Whatever. Oh, we're good. Goodness. Who knows, right? Like, this is the way Zoom life is now. Work from home life, noise canceling headset, folks. Just saying. <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay. So, hopefully, we're all still good here. Um, yeah, payments. So, payments. Depending on where you are, uh, whether Canada or the US, we have different payment options. So you could pay by credit card or ACH. Um, we love that because it just kicks off the workflows, kicks off payments. I'm not reconciling all that good stuff back and forth. Okay, let's, this was the long about version of actually creating the proposal. I'm sorry, I got very <laughs> passionate there. It's also highly therapeutic. So thank you for listening to me. <laughs> It was just so therapeutic. Okay, so, um, oh, I had to save the, okay, why are we being, sorry about this, so what did I do wrong here? Save the service, see, isn't it so smart when it, oh, goodness gracious, I, you know, when that internet connection bopped, sorry about that, guys, I'll just be two seconds here. I refreshed, that was my error, so I'm just going to add these services Didn't real get. quick. Yeah, I, I skipped a step and panicked there when the internet went. That was my fault, not product's fault. I apologize. <laughs> no problem. Okay. And We've all been there. Oh, goodness, right? Isn't this just the way life is right now? Yeah, I apologize for having to uh, duplicate some of this for you. I know it's highly boring to... Well, uh, it's, it's a good um, refresher. You're very sweet, Kathy. <laughs> <laughs> i something. We both know it's a pain, but thank you. <laughs> it's it, it solidifies. It's you know what teachers do. They they repeat it, so it solidifies. Yeah, it, there we it, go. Yes, head. this is positive. That's right. Exactly, Kathy. This is positive <laughs> reinforcement. <laughs> yes, I shouldn't have done what I did, and you know, aren't we all just humans? So, again, it was greetings. The real question is if. Other people are laughing as much as we are I, I ourselves. Hope so. If not, I'm having, I'm just having the time of my life. Yeah, exactly. I'm just going to cut this short saying thank you for your time today, but we know, we all know we're going to put something a little bit right. funner in here. So just ignore my silliness here. Okay. Um, okay. Terms, presentations, payments, yes. create the proposal. Create it. Create it. Yay. Okay. So we've created the proposal. What's happened is it's shot an email off to the client. They can uh, accept a digital signature. It's all great and all this good stuff. So here is an example of what that would look like from their point of view. So hopefully I have not messed this up too much. <laughs> okay. So they would get a little link within their, their email, um, or you can copy the link. I'll show you how to do that. We typically do like a customized email. We'll, we'll send something a little bit more or we'll, we'll text the link, whatever the case may be. But you remember that brochure we loaded. So we haven't even gotten to the proposal side. We're starting to bring in that brand, right? So if I mm -hmm. haven't been able to talk to the client a whole lot, this video is going to help. It's going to be that explainer. They're starting to feel a little bit more than just that kind of cold little PDF document that's coming across the email chain there. So obviously I would have a much better uh, brochure, but Here's a template you can get started with for free by going to practiceignition.com and leveraging Canva, which is uh, also free. We had our little kickoff video. That's me and my business partner, my charming husband that puts up with a lot for me. So his name's Brian, so kudos to him. Our little, you know, a little email. Maybe we had something a little bit more here as well. You're gonna notice on the bottom here, there's a series of steps, a series of workflows, right? So next is our summary. So remember what I said, like getting very specific about your services and what you're doing. I, 
you know, I jumped the gun there, guys, when the internet went. But, uh, you know, here in this case, we're doing payroll services and we're doing transactions uh, up to 100 uh, transactions, which is probably really fun considering they have 10 employees. So I'm not quite mm -hmm. sure how that's going to work out, but uh, um, yeah. all this good stuff. We see the schedule. Um, we could see on acceptance, uh, we're going to get paid $1,880 because they're behind. They're behind a couple of months. And moving forward, the bill's going to be $470 a month. So they're able to see that transparency like, Ooh, yeah, I didn't hire a bookkeeper. It's not going to magically get done in one month. Uh, we actually had a client do that. Eight months is what they were behind and hoping that the one month, you know, we're, we're asking through the sales process, can all that be done in the one month? And then, no. <laughs> you apply those services for each month you're behind. In this case, yep. we have the payments. So they, uh, we require payments. So they would input their, their credit card information or their ACH information and they would digitally sign. And from that, what you get is the digital signature comes through, you get notified right away from practice ignition. From here, the client would get that pop up video at the end that would say, you know, thank you so much for, you know, signing our proposal. Um, I enabled payments. So I should show you exactly I'm just going to disable payments on this proposal to show you what that workflow looks like. But uh, yeah, it's pretty easy. They get a notification, you start getting paid. What happens with your workflows is it triggers that within whatever practice management platform I had mentioned to you earlier. And from there, uh, you just start the work and manage the scope creep as it comes along. So I'm gonna take a little break here. Is there any questions that have kind of popped up that, um, I don't really have any questions coming okay. in, but yeah, definitely a reminder, if you do have questions um, about anything, just put that into the um, Q&A panel or area or whatever it is. Um, there was a question earlier about um, engagement letters and, and templates. And did I see something on the website that looked like yes. as a resource? Okay. Absolutely. So um, if you go to practiceignition. okay, I got so many of these files. Sorry, that was like a lot of like, ah! <laughs> no. Uh, so here we do have a lot of resources. So we have some proposal templates for you. We okay. also have things built in. So if I were to take you back to product, um, when you sign up for practice ignition, we're not just going to leave you to like, oh, hey, good luck with that. Um, that's not what we're into, right? We have a whole onboarding mm -hmm. team. We don't charge for that, right? Like we, we want you to succeed because we know that when you succeed, hey, guess what? us as a product, we also succeed as well. But if you are a little bit more, I want to do it myself, I, you know, maybe, you know, asking for help is kind of strange or uncomfortable for me, that's okay. Um, go to this discover page. This is a new page that we have launched and it will literally walk you through everything hmm. you need to do to get started, including some of those sample services I talked to you about. And myself and Josh have been working on some of the COVID services that you oh, might wow. want to consider, not necessarily COVID as in profiting. Um, my approach that I took was like, if you're faced with a client right now that it's like, you know what, we can't afford to pay you $1,300 a month right now, we're going to have to let you go. Maybe what you can do is still do the bookkeeping, but not charge them during this time, but it's not for free and it's not a discount, but you amortize those uh, missed months in future periods, right? So these mm -hmm. are different services that can help you with that. Or maybe you do provide a straight up discount, or maybe you have to do like a similar for, for both countries right now. We have a lot of compliance stuff, like a lot of subsidies and different, oh my goodness, like it's like changing all the time. So there's all this additional right. work. Maybe you got to do that as well. So this is going to be your friend, this discover page and also any account manager, anything like that. And there's anything I've said during this webinar that might be helpful. They ping me all the time on Slack and I can try and give you some resources and some tips. I'm just going to take you back to that proposal real quickly because I disabled payments. You can see that they couldn't sign off on it until they put in their credit card information. So I just um, removed the payment details and it's Mr. Smithers and oh, because sorry, pardon me. <laughs> and they would select accept sorry, this isn't their email link that's being sent. Um, right, so it's a preview that's what right there. Happen. Yeah, okay. but not to worry, if you needed to accept on your client's behalf, you can do that as well hmm. within practice ignition. So yeah, everything, it just creates this really seamless environment. And like I said, I would separate them if you're doing tax, if you're doing bookkeeping, if you're doing one-off work, maybe you're doing cleanup work, um, different engagements, it's kind of helpful to do that. Um, 
there's uh, lots of different plans for you to consider for your practice. We have some great starter plans as well. And so, uh, yeah, it's basically a great tool that I cannot live without right now. <laughs> <laughs> That was that came across sales. I apologize, but that is. I don't think there's anything. No, it's a matter of we're all learning about technology and figuring out what is what what you guys have and will it work with what what we're doing. I mean, that's not. Yeah, it's a matter of like, okay, are some people want to invest in something that's going to make it easier for the way their business is set up? You know, if that fits right, then I. It's not a sales thing. It's learning. Yeah, like. With any SaaS product, I mean, regardless of whether you use, you know, a payment platform, a receivables platform, a financial management system, you always have to look at that return on investment, right? Like Mm -hmm. what is, what, like, you don't want to just use something for the sake of using it or because you saw a great webinar with a really candid person, like you really want to make sure you're going to get that ROI, right? Right. And it's really important. And we were talking about this yesterday, um, right, Kathy, about you know, having a limited app stack or having a core app stack is, is something that's fundamental and helpful. And for me, you know, for me, it's about the time. I don't have time to do a lot of this other stuff. So that subscription investment helps me to free up my time to do other things. But right. maybe it's something like not carrying accounts receivable. Maybe it's something about growing your business because you're not managing scope creep, which is what you would do in your libraries, right? By separating your services a bit better. Um, it, it, well, could be, it does, it helps you get something. a really good structure around all of this. Yeah. So, and that's, yeah, that's exactly. Nice. Yeah, exactly. And it's, it's something you think about forward in mind, like where can you take it from here? You want that data to flow somewhere else, not just the financial data, not just the billing and the payments, but also those tasks as well. So like this task would kick off a task in carbon to run payroll mm-hmm. biweekly for wilderness tours. And it right. will be assigned to Charmaine, right? And if Charmaine is sick or unable to come up to work for some reason, we can take all those workflows in carbon and assign them to Jenny. So mm-hmm. you always want to think about how these individual tasks are, are, are being handled in, in a way to keep them very smooth. Make your workflow and it's really, work for you. Yeah, being able to have that mindset really helps you create a practice that, yeah, you're doing these repeatable tasks and are able to grow and become more profitable on all these clients because if you're just trying to recreate the wheel every single time you got to be charging a whole bunch of money for that to happen yeah like if you're an open checkbook that better be one heck of a retainer like if you are like the be all and end all of bookkeeping and tax that better be several thousands of dollars (laughs) right because i mean yeah if you're recreating that's yeah yeah the it's the creation of stuff that takes the time. It's not necessarily the implementing or, you know, the, not the implementing, but the actually like doing it, going through yeah. all the steps. It's the, yeah, it's putting all the structure around and everything. Yeah. That, it's, um, it's the backbone for me. Yeah. It's, it is like I get, and, and it's never perfect. Your workflows are always going to change because right. some new compliance rule is going to come in or some client's going to have this crazy new CRM that they just yeah. implemented on the weekend. Um, <laughs> that, People, yeah, you know, it just forgot to tell you something. It's forgot to tell me where the data is coming from and there's a new merchant terminal. Not that I've ever had that happen. <laughs> <laughs> they always, it's, yeah, it's always something. Like, wait, really? Okay. So um, there is, so ahead. I was chatting with one person about like mm-hmm. the engagement letters. And yes. so, I mean- you guys have templates, but it's not necessarily the same as a lawyer creating one. And, and yeah, this person was like, so she, you still have an att- attorney check over your engagement letter. I mean, if you're going to have yeah. an attorney involved, I would have them create the engagement letter and you pop it into here. Yeah. You know, you, you can. Yeah. And, and one thing I maybe didn't stress upon enough, the new sample engagement letters we have. Uh, for practice ignition for the for Canada and the US have been reviewed by a legal firm. So, you know, you could do a couple of things. I would think in your best interest, you should always have a second set of eyes on your business mm-hmm. from a legal standpoint. Just, I think that's just 
good business practice, but you don't have to use our templates. You, if you have one, the team can help you create that engagement within practice ignition. And like I said, you may have more than one right? Like maybe you yeah. have that tax engagement. Maybe you have the advisory engagement. I don't know, whatever fancy word comes up next with a new engagement, right? So it, it, I wouldn't get too stuck on it, but you do want to think of it from a legal standpoint and always have some sort of involvement from someone else to make sure it makes sense. Yeah. So in, in my thing too is you you know we're all different sizes and it's a matter of like if you're starting out or or longer long and what you're going to invest in and these engagement letters give us some sort of protection now yeah. and it's a protection against a what if in the future and that sort of thing exactly it, and it's a matter of what risk you're willing to take if you want to go out and invest you know thousands of dollars at the beginning for the highest best you know sparkling glitter engagement letter you want that's fine or you could spend a little bit less on an attorney and do that or you can use a sample letter and like you can always evolve and change stuff around um mm -hmm. i know like in i'm in georgia and i just know that like the states have different rules but in the end like it's just it's it's kind of like a safety net and you don't mm -hmm. You really don't know how strong the safety net is until you yeah, have to use until it. You have, until you get until you have to use it, right? And we've right. modified ours as well. Like we've even thought about it from a team perspective. Like we're offering bookkeeping services. What happens if a client tries to source one of our employees? Right. So right. like we've had some engagements written out with that in mind that if they do that, then they will have to pay us damages in the amount of whatever like three months worth of services or a year worth of services you know right. things about notice of termination uh, limit of liability what we will cover what we won't cover um you know like there's so there's many so things much. to think about in this day it's not just as simple as just doing work for someone anymore the, the handshake deal is is not is not acceptable right no, so it's definitely yeah. not and the fact of you having the biggest part here is the scope creep and having yes. some sort of thing in place, clearly defining what you're doing on yeah, things. Like, and this then, is what you agreed to do. Right. <laughs> this know, is what and, you and want. <laughs> being able to easily go back at it. I don't know how many yeah. times I would be like nine months into an engagement and be like, I know there's, I, I feel like I'm way over this, but I'm going to have to go find that PDF and yeah. figure out what it was or, you know, and, and then I'm going to have to address it. And then, you know, this is a lot obviously easier. This would help you through it, right? And like right. I said, I run now a small boutique bookkeeping practice and I still leverage this. So it's not for the, the enterprise level. And for me, growing that monthly reoccurring revenue with existing clients is, is really important to me because first of all, it's a heck of a lot easier to grow those services than it is to find that. We call them dragons. We have an ideal methodology. I'm sorry, client methodology. So we call them dragons. But it's a lot, it's darn hard to find dragons. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, like, and, and we, you know, build stellar relationships with our clients, right? So yeah. it's difficult to do that if we were focusing on like higher conversions and lower value, which is okay practice as well. But for us, monitoring scope creep is really what we use practice ignition for. Yes, it has a lot of compliance to it from the letter of engagement. Yes, it keeps us paid. Yes, it kicks off my workflows and carbon, but boy, it really has my back when it says, you know what, you agree that you would only have five bank accounts. Now you've adopted the profit first methodology and you have 500, um, <laughs> no, probably like 50, right? <laughs> and which I think is great. I love that profit first methodology. I think it's great. We actually have it as a service item in uh -huh. our library, but there's a charge for that because right. dang, you gotta reconcile some bank accounts, right? Uh -huh. So yeah. Yeah, definitely. And there's, it, God, I lost it. <laughs> That's okay. It was just a I great I little gonna, nugget. It was going to be the best thing ever. Oh no, no, I, I got it. Um, I don't, I, I don't think I've ever really talked about it this much. Um, totally. Yeah, I've maybe told a few people, but I did, I was in a really bad situation once where a client was threatening to sue me mm -hmm. and I had it clearly defined in an engagement letter. It was all clearly defined in an engagement letter. I probably 
could have done better on like number of transactions, exactly what this or that, yeah. but that did not stop that person from threatening to sue me and not paying me for everything. This is the one, like that I said, red flag, don't ever take the client. Yeah. Yeah. That, no, that, like, that. <laughs> yeah. Even if you yeah. have an engagement letter, even if you have a lawyer, even what, what people don't get. And again, I haven't really talked about this before is you can do everything right. People can still try to sue you. Yeah. It, 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 it's, yeah the person it doesn't matter yeah. and yeah there's, i spent thousands some of dollars interesting folks out there yeah I spent, yeah i spent thousands of dollars thousands of hours supporting what i did all this sort of stuff so i wouldn't get in so i wouldn't actually end up in a lawsuit yeah you know when i didn't yeah. do anything wrong and i had a clear engagement letter but yeah. don't matter they're like oh i got an attorney we're coming after you and yeah. we're gonna make your life hell it it like yeah yeah anyone need, can do it anyone and you do you need you need a paper trail a paper trail a virtual paper trail <laughs> paper yeah. trail my goodness can you believe that we said that that i said that but you do need that you you do need the compliance side to protect you for your business right. for your brand right and yeah like we've been fooled too like you they get through the discovery call they get through another discovery call and we even engage in them and it's like whoa what just happens like heckle and jide no this isn't a good fit yeah. we're going to terminate services right um especially if we find something through like we have canada revenue agency you guys have the R irs so there's a lot yeah. of stuff in there um but you, you know just, that wasn't yeah, you gotta be careful and be aware of what's yeah. going on and and protect yourself as much as you yeah. can um, mm -hmm. but it all comes down to like, I feel like risk and luck. I mean, <laughs> it's business. If yeah. it was perfect, we wouldn't, we wouldn't have the economy. Right. We have. Like, like if you like guys, <laughs> it's business, yeah. right? There's yes. risk and reward. And it's just finding that comfort zone between the two and just doing your best to be protected. And yeah, like these, these engagement letters, they help out with that, the legality side. And then it's twofold, right? It's the scope side. So it protects us from the work that we do. And right. then it just frankly makes things easier right? For, for at least us um, as well. Yeah. Um, yeah well, so just to wrap up, these were some of yeah. the integrations I'm sure people are going to ask. So yeah, zero QuickBooks online. We have some uh, zaps as well. Zero practice manager. We, I didn't update this for the Intuit practice management because that's uh, it's a little so bit new, but yeah. it's on the tax side guys. So if you have the yeah. like, Intuit tax something or rather, like I don't do tax work, so I'm not great yeah. talker on all that, but yeah, that it works with that. It's system. there. Yeah. yeah. And I apologize. <laughs> I, I have team members that are far smarter than me with that. So uh, I, I know that it works. And also I'm in Canada, so we don't use that. We don't have right. it. I'd love to have it here in Canada. I would. I think it, maybe it will come up. I'm um, sure it'll be well. expanded eventually. It just yeah. that's where it is right now. Yeah, right. We we always seem to get the we always seem to get the leftovers. So you guys test everything, and it's <laughs> I'm not complaining. I'm just saying. No. Eventually, <laughs> yeah. it comes north. It's <laughs> awesome. Complaining into it. I'm sorry. I love you. Um, but yeah, if you guys have any, you know, want to follow up social media, just I don't know, exchange cat videos or something. I don't know. Um, there's there Twitter, go. and maybe not on LinkedIn, but. <laughs> Totally happen on LinkedIn. But anyways, <laughs> best LinkedIn post ever. ever. <laughs> yes. Thank you so much for your time oh, and welcome. everyone for joining us today. I hope you all enjoyed it. And if you're watching the replay, I hope you laugh your head off. I know I did. And that, <laughs> you know what? You've made my day. So this is If you're watching the, top the replay the and got it to this far, it's amazing. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. This is awesome. Yes. Had a great time. And I love hearing more about practice ignition. And I know that this is a great fit for a lot of people out there. Um, and definitely if it's interesting, give it a shot. Yeah, give it a go. Exactly. Yeah. You can start with a trial on practiceignition.com, 14 day trial, get yourself started and just play around with it and see if it's going to work just as awesome for you as it does for me. So Anywho, awesome. thank you everybody and all the accounting professionals, all my friends out there for all you're doing for small businesses right now. I know it's super crazy. And I just want to say thank you because I find we're not thanked a lot. So you get virtual high fives for me today. So thanks Aww, for being amazing. So sweet. Thanks. <laughs> bye. Okay. Bye guys. <laughs>